Hello, YouTube learners and students. This is Dr. Singhal, PhD from El Camino College, Torrance, California. I'm going to talk about dynamic binding and polymorphism. And it's important that <clears throat> you understand the video prerequisites. You need to know about inheritance in C++. So before watching this video, you must know something about inheritance. My students can learn that from my ebook. Others can learn that from their favorite C++ textbook. Also, video is being done unscripted, kind of homemade. So it will not be as perfect as Jurassic Park movie, which is scripted and millions of dollars are spent. Okay. So let's talk about word binding. The word binding will be used to explain the object and function called binding. Once I show you the code, you will understand more details. But for now, imagine a class foo and its member function print. Then the code fragment below shows you how the print function will be called. So we have the object f foo type and f dot print is the function called to the print function. <coughs> so computer when sees this statement binds f with the print function and invokes the print function which might exist either in the class foo or it could be inherited by the foo from one of its ancestor classes. If ancestor class functions are protected or public, they are inherited by their automatically by the ch child classes. So statement f dot print is an object f binding with function call invoking the fun function print. That's the meaning of the word binding. <coughs> okay, let me now take you to Xcode to show a system of inheritance related classes. And hopefully I can remember to come back to the PowerPoint to summarize everything. So let's go to Xcode. So here, let me show you first in the hierarchical diagram or maybe I can show you in the flat diagram first here that I have a class called vehicle which has a function print, its constructor and a data member speed and then there's a class called airplane which, ha which has its constructor, its print function and additional data member called number of things. Notice there's a print function in both classes and if I go to hierarchical <laughs> That would mean that class airplane is being derived from the vehicle <coughs> and these are constructor and members of the vehicle class. These are the constructors and members of the airplane class. Uh, now I want to show you each one separately the code. This is my vehicle class and it has a protected data member called speed which is right here. Protected data members are visible through all the children of that class, but not to the main function. So as far as main function is concerned, this is as good as private. And then it has a constructor and a print function. I want to show you the code of the constructor and print function. There's nothing here. I'm just using <clears throat> the initialization list to initialize this data member to the value SPD and no code needed inside the constructor. So if I do that, you can see there's nothing in there. But let's look at the print function. Print function of vehicle class simply prints the speed and it outputs a statement, I'm a general vehicle because it's on the top of the hierarchy. Okay. Now <clears throat> we go to airplane class. Well, not necessary to open it in a separate window. 
Class A planes is inherited from the vehicle. This is the syntax of inheritance. And it has an additional protected data member called num wings or number of wings int type. So now, since property of inher inheritance says that all the protected and public members of ancestor class are inherited, this speed is actually inherited by the airplane as well. So the airplane has two data members, speed and num wings. <coughs> so constructor needs two arguments and here is the constructor body where first the vehicle part is called and we pass the speed data member to it as PD and then the airplane part which is num wings and we pass them n wings to it. And the print function of the airplane class we called here the vehicle dot print. So we want to we're going to get everything that is in this print function speed and statement I'm a general vehicle both speed needs to print it and then I print number of wings that I added in the airplane class but I added an additional statement I'm an airplane I fly in air okay all right. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> I want to show you the code in the main function. Let me fold all these because I don't need these. Folding is generally good. So code in the main function. So here I create a vehicle object with the speed of 100.5 and then I print vehicle class v1 data through vehicle class print function and I'm calling the v1.print. So that's going to be pretty uneventful. It's just going to print the speed and a statement from the print function. So let me do that first. And what should I do here? Possibly I can comment all this out. <coughs> comment selection so that I only see this out there. Okay. So let's just run this program. So I'm going to bring it up. It says speed 100.5. I'm a general vehicle. Now that's expected because. If I go to print function of the vehicle class, it prints the speed first and it prints the statement on a general vehicle. Okay? So no surprises here. Now I want to uh, just, okay, so this kind of binding where object and function name binding is being done is called static binding s-t-a-t-i-c static binding function calls and objects are decided at the compile time okay we'll show you another example of static binding so let me see can i comment this out sure i can but this time I'm just going to have only airplane class here. Uncommon selection. So here I cre <laughs> create an airplane object which has a speed of 600.99 and four wing members. If you go back to constructor of the airplane class you'll see the vehicle op part was being built by calling the vehicle class constructor which sets the speed member whatever value is being passed here and airplane mem part is being built by passing the number of wings and wings and 
So if I'm passing 600.99 and 4, those two will be the airplane properties. Okay, so let's uh, just run this one. And now you can see that I got the speed of 600.99. I get this statement because remember I called vehicle class print function which printed the speed. But then this was the code in print function of the airplane class and it says I'm an airplane I fly in here. No surprise so far. Okay, now I'm going to comment in this one. And let me comment out this print function. Or I can leave it, doesn't really matter. So, <clears throat> one property of inheritance is that, which we'll summarize soon. Uh, that a base class object reference can hold the address to the child class. And we are doing that right here. We have reference v2 holding the address of airplane object. And now we are trying to print the object ap which is contained in this reference through the print function. Let's see what happens here. We just need to remember to worry about the last print, okay? Now here's a bit of a surprise that I'm only getting the speed and the statement, I'm a general vehicle just like here, even though reference v2 points to object AP, which is airplane type, which should have number of wings data, as well as the statement that I'm an airplane and I fly through the air, but that's not there. So two parts of the airplane data, number of wings, and the statement that I'm a airplane, I fly through the air. You can see here, number of wings and I'm airplane, I fly in air. Those got sliced off. That's the slicing problem in static binding. All computer knows at the compile time is that this is V2 is vehicle type. It doesn't know that AP is attached to it because addresses are created at the runtime. So it just slice off the four and the statement that I'm an airplane, I fly through the air. This slicing problem is there. This is fixed very easily by virtual function. So all I have to do is I go to my vehicle class and put the word virtual here virtual and that be, that means print function became a virtual function and I run it again and this time you'll see I got the whole thing I got the number of wings and I got the statement I'm fly, airplane I fly in air which should be this one Okay, so this time computer made a correct binding at the runtime, knowing that it should be calling not the vehicle class print, but the airplane class print. That's called dynamic binding. Virtual functions allow dynamic binding. This is the summary of virtual functions. Word virtual must be there in header file only for the function made into virtual function. Putting word virtual in CPP will cause compile error. Virtual functions allow correct function and object name pairing at runtime. Virtual functions have overhead, so make use of them only as needed. 
by adding the word virtual or removing it, you can turn off virtuality on and off. Destructor can be.